I'm told I should never be far from one of the reinforced shelters that's scattered along this track. And to make sure I can get to one in an emergency, I have to carry this everywhere, a tank with a half hour supply of oxygen. I'm heading to possibly the strangest location for a physics lab that I've ever been to, a kilometre underground. We are entering in the main lab. Wow, this is huge. It's 12 metres high. That's enormous. This extraordinary space will eventually be home to SABRE, the sodium iodide active background rejection experiment, a dark matter detector. So why are we a kilometre underground? Because we need to be shielded from cosmic ray. The signal we are looking is so small that cosmic ray will swamp it, so we need to shield from that. This far down, radiation, which is all around us on the surface, is filtered out to make extra sure nothing interferes with the readings. Even the walls are sealed against radioactive elements embedded in the rock itself. Only dark matter should get through to the lab. And what they hope to detect it with is a crystal made of pure sodium iodide. This thing looks awesome. What is this? Uh, this is a mock-up of the core of the Sabre experiment. Yeah. This cylinder here represents a sodium iodide crystal that will be added five or seven kilos. They will be located inside a vessel of Sabre, more or less at this height. There will be seven of them. Sodium iodide is used because it has a special property. When a particle collides with the nucleus of one of its atoms, a tiny amount of light is given off. It's hoped that this will be because of a direct hit from a dark matter particle. The crystals will be sealed inside a steel vessel, a final layer of protection. The technicians are even going to have to worry about what they bring down for lunch. Every element has a half-life, so is a little bit radioactive. So something rich in potassium, like a banana, has enough radiation, not to harm me, but to disturb the sensitive experiments that are eventually going to be installed down here. The vessel to hold the crystals is still being built. The results of the experiment may take years to see the light of day. But this gives me a unique opportunity to look inside this groundbreaking experiment before it goes to work. stored in a workshop at Swinburne University may well be the answer to the dark matter question. Hey, Hello, Sam. Maddie. How's it going? Good. How are you? Woohoo! This is Here the vessel. We are. Holy cow, this is going to be our dark matter detector. Show me around. So yeah, this whole thing is made out of brand new steel. We either need something brand new or ancient Roman lead. Why is yeah. that? So all the kind of uh, nuclear stuff that lives in the atmosphere from nuclear testing and things like that, which doesn't cause any harm to us but would ruin our experiment, can kind of settle on the surfaces of things. Uh, can we look inside? Uh, yeah, sure. OK. Maddie has had to learn a whole new skill set for this project. Show me what it looks like in there. To be an experimental physicist, you have to become certified with like working at heights, working in confined spaces. Unfortunately, I've not had the training, so I have to watch from outside. OK, great. I can see what you're doing on the phone. There we go. So this is where the detectors are going to go? At the heart of the vessel will hang the detectors. It's not a big space. Seven containers of high-purity sodium iodide crystals. So this is the inside of the Sabre vessel. Uh, and I'm sitting kind of right smack bang underneath where our crystals and their big copper enclosures will sit. So they'll sit right in the middle. What we hope will happen is we have a collision between the dark matter particle and the nucleus. So either the sodium nucleus or the iodine nucleus. When that happens, you can kind of think about it as sort of uh, recoiling billiard balls. So even though we can't see the dark matter, we can see the impact that it has on our target nucleus. It gets transformed into a light signal. 
a direct hit on a sodium iodide nucleus will release a tiny amount of light, which is then picked up by sensors.